All right. If you've never been in Classroom before, you go to classroom.google.com. And you'll notice that I can't log in. It says I'm ineligible because I'm logged in with my personal Gmail. So in order to be able to get into Google Classroom, I have to log in with my school. You have to be a Google Education School to be able to um, access Google Classroom. Now, the first time you log in, you'll see that screen that we saw previously, and you'll either say, I'm a teacher or I'm a student. You want to click, I'm a teacher, regardless if you're joining someone else's class or not. And then you will do create a class. You will give the class a name. You can change your theme to any of these. You can upload a photo and it will be the whole theme back there. All right. I am going to assign the lesson plans. Now, I don't make mine due until the first week after school is out, and that way they can work on them all year. I'm going to go to my drive. And I'm going to choose the lesson plan template. Now, I can either say the students can view the file, they can edit the file, or make a copy for each student. If I'm going to do one for a teacher who has only um, one class and she doesn't collaborate with anyone else, I use this when I was at the high school, or for my PE teachers at the elementary school, or my special teacher like art or character ed or technology, you, would, you could just make a copy for each one of the students. But for elementary, for like my third grade reading, I did um, students can edit file. And I actually had a classroom called third grade reading. This way, all three of my third grade reading teachers work on the same lesson plan. They plan together and they just type on it and it's live. So then I would say assign. Now, you'll see that it says zero done. That's because none have turned it in. I tell them not to turn it in because if they turn it in, then they can't access it anymore. However, if they do turn it in by mistake, they can just simply go and unsubmit and then work on it some more. And this says zero not done. And the reason that is is because no one has joined my class. Right here is the class code. And when they would log in, when we clicked the plus sign to create a class, they would click the plus sign and join a class. And then they would be able to type in the code and you would see over here how many students had joined. So I'm going to go back and show you an example of that. So these are my teachers who are teaching summer school. See, one submitted it. Now, whenever she tries to go to type on it again, she's not going to have access to it. So she will have to unsubmit. These say 12 not done, but when you click on it, oh, you know what? It shows late because whenever I did the assignment, I failed to notice the date. So I need to change the date so that they will have access to it. 
Whoops, that was a new assignment. I'm going to go to that assignment and do edit and change the date to August 15th and save it. Now they have access to it. I'm going to go here and show you. Um, this was my English class, my English teachers when I was at the high school. And um, some of them submitted. I was going to show you um, one teacher. I had five English teachers, and one of them had actually unjoined the class at the end of the year, and I told her to go back and join so that she could submit her lesson plans and you would see. You'll notice that it says done late. That's because it was after the date that it was due in June. But, for example, she was one freshman English teacher. So when I opened hers, here's all of her lesson plans. Down here, she unpacked her IFD. Over here, I can't see it because of my screencast. Um, I believe that's where it was the evaluation, and then she evaluated the unit. That was her first six weeks. Now, I'm going to go back and show you um, my, an elementary one. Oh, I also assign my local domains. Each teacher has to fill out a local domain. All right, so since my third grade teachers didn't have to submit because they were working on it, when I would go in the classroom, I could just pull up my Google Classroom, go over there to whichever third grade teacher, this was math and science, click on it, and there was their lesson plans. Now, what I like about this is if, say, we ended up having a fire drill right here, they could edit their lesson plans, move it over, put fire drill, and they didn't have to turn in anything else. Or if I came in the classroom, they didn't have to say, oh, hang on just a minute. We're, we're not doing what we had planned for today because we had a fire drill yesterday. It was already up there. Now I'm going to go back and show you, let's say that I am just in my Google Drive and I'm fixing to go into a classroom. You can have Google Classroom also on your smartphone. There is an app for it. But you would go to the Rubik's Cube and then you would go to More and then you would go to Classroom. And there you would have easy access to all of your classes and all of your lesson plans.